Hey everybody, Mr. Troy here for the wildly popular video series, Mr. Troy Explains. Um, I'm going to explain today how to factor something that wouldn't have real zeros. So like there's no real number that I could plug in in order to make this thing zero. Now we know from working with imaginary numbers that if I plugged in x equals 5i or x equals negative 5i, that those are our two zeros. So we could work backwards and we could say, oh, so my factors must be x minus 5i and x plus 5i. But there's another way we can do it. We can think of this as x squared minus negative 25. And then suddenly we have a difference of squares pattern. Negative 25 has a square root, 5i, all of the sudden. So if we were looking at something like x squared plus 36, we could say, OK, so that's like x squared minus negative 36. So x plus 6i and x minus 6i. So then what would it be for something like 4x squared plus 81? Well, if we follow the same pattern, let's see if 2x plus 9i times 2x minus 9i works. Just kind of guessing, staying with the same sort of idea. So when we FOIL to check, we get 4x squared. OK, good start. My outers and my inners are going to be minus 18ix and plus 18ix. Whatever an ix is, they, they cancel out there. OK, and then we're going to get minus 81 i squared. So this is minus a negative. So it does work out to 4x squared plus 81. Cool. We can take this a step further. Before we do, let's look at some graphs. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, the reason that these equations don't factor in the normal way is because they don't have real zeros. And the way that we can see that on the graph is that they don't cross the x-axis. So we had to come up with a way to factor using imaginary numbers which don't show up on this graph because the x-axis is all about real numbers and the y-axis is all about real numbers. All right, now here's where it gets wild we can take this a step further by thinking of this as a difference of squares. Now, I know what you're thinking. You look at something like x squared plus 36 and you're like, that is not a difference of squares because the word difference means subtraction. But at least there are squares there. And now all of the sudden, we're going to think about x squared minus 12x plus 40 as a difference of squares. It's not even a difference of two things, really, and they're certainly not all perfect squares. Oh, just wait and see. If you've taken an Algebra 1 class or an Algebra 2 class or a pre-calculus class, at some point you've come across the idea of completing the square. So I actually uncompleted the square or completed the square by, by splitting it apart, however you want to think about that, but I took part of that expression and wrote it as a perfect square. So this is the perfect square trinomial for x minus 6 quantity squared. 
using the same idea as before, I'm going to say minus negative 4. So now, do you see that this is a difference of squares? The first square is x minus 6 squared, and the second square is negative 4. So here's how this would factor. So we like to think of our difference of squares pattern as an a plus b times an a minus b. In this case, the a, the thing being squared, is x minus 6, and the b is 2i. So let's go ahead and FOIL this out to make sure that it works. So when I go to FOIL this out, I'm going to do my firsts, which is x squared minus 12x plus 36. So my firsts actually require their own foiling. So it's like foiloiling or something. I don't know. My outers are negative 2i times x minus 6. My inners are positive 2i times x minus 6. And those are going to cancel out. And my lasts are negative 4i squared. So these cancel. And that's going to give me x squared minus 12x plus 36 plus 4, which is x squared minus 12x plus 40. Hey, that's what I started with. OK, now let's take it one step further. This is really cool. Let's take a look at a graph. OK, so here's a graph of x squared minus 12x plus 40. Obviously, it doesn't cross the x-axis because it doesn't have any real zeros. Okay, so it doesn't have any x-intercepts. But if you look at just the first part that we used to factor, you can think of that like a horizontal translation. You can think of that as shifting your graph six units to the right, which is why our vertex falls right here. Now here's where it gets even a step cooler. Imagine taking that blue parabola there that you see, imagine turning it 180 degrees upside down, and then rotating it 90 degrees into the page. So if you imagine this as our original parabola in the x, y plane, and you imagine the green axis as being the imaginary numbers, that's where your imaginary zeros are, where the graph hits that plane. It's pretty neat, but it also takes a, a third dimension. Good news is we've got a third dimension, so we're good. All right, I'm going to give one more problem to see if we can see how it factors. It's pretty cool. Let's see. All right, if you just wanted to do this mechanically, you would say that this is x plus 10 quantity squared plus 9. And that would factor to x plus 10 plus 3i and x plus 10 minus 3i. Pretty cool. All right, hope you enjoyed. Hang in there.